the wildfire smoke plume or haze or whatever. It's really a mess. It's a real problem up in the uh, northeast of the country. So you've got Canadian wildfires. I think there are 250, they said, different ones burning right now, which seemed a lot like a lot more than what I had anticipated. Um, so there's there's a bunch of small fires, so many of them. Yeah, according to the New York Times here, 250 fires were burning out of control as of early Wednesday. So there's a smog warning for Quebec, uh, parts of Quebec and Ontario, and it's causing all kinds of chaos in New York right now. You have uh, two major league baseball games have been canceled. I-, I can imagine you don't really want to be up there in the stands having a a hot dog and a Miller Lite, most likely, uh, and drinking it and, and hanging out, and you feel like you're just breathing in acrid fumes. That's not good. So two major, major league baseball games have been canceled. Uh, a bunch of theater productions have been canceled as well. Governor Kathy Hochul, who inspires confidence during a crisis in absolutely no one, I don't think there is a person. I don't even think there's a Democrat who you could say, oh, yeah, Governor Hochul, she's great. Um, she's called the worsening air quality an emergency crisis. Thanks for that, Governor Hochul. People can't leave their homes and breathe the air, but she's there to tell you that, you know, this is bad. Bad. Okay. Um, this is, for a lot of people, also a moment where they're seeing the one ineptitude of the the leadership that's supposed to be able to handle things like a crisis like this. Also, there are people walking around uh, wearing masks. So there's a little bit of a COVID throwback with that. Uh, The theater productions for Hamilton, Camelot, and a Shakespeare in the Park production of Hamlet. Oh man, that actually sounds like that'd be fun. Um, And the Yankees and the Liberty for the WNBA. Anyway, flights have been, that's all been canceled. Flights into New York have been delayed by a few hours because of visibility. It's it's a big mess. Okay, it's a big problem. Not something anybody would have expected. I, I remember, I think one of my brothers was trying to come back from Europe at a time when the Iceland, some of you will recall this, was it Iceland that had the volcanic eruption and it was a giant, volcanic ash cloud in the sky that was so big that planes couldn't fly for a while. So if you were on the other side of the Atlantic, you were kind of stuck for a bit uh, because of all the air traffic control issues that that caused. So natural disasters are a thing that that happen. We've this has been, you know, open the Bible, right? I mean, this has been a thing that has happened all throughout our human history. And uh, sometimes the earth decides to remind us all that we are uh, we are guests on uh, on the earth in a sense. We we live at nature's whim in some ways, and here we have the Democrats. Instead of just saying, "All right, think about how you could focus on what could be done here, combating the fires." I know the Biden administration sent sent up, I think, a few hundred firefighters to help, but the the single most important thing would be combating the fires. And then you maybe would also get into, when you're talking about leadership response to this, you would get into, okay, um, how do we make sure this has the most minimal health impact and disruption on the people that are affected by this as possible? I, I'm, I told you I'm going to be with uh, Carrie's family, uh, hanging out, barbecuing uh, out in North Carolina, looking forward to that. I, my understanding is that this smoke monster is going to spread even further. So you might have poor air quality. I know already Pennsylvania, I think, is being affected and and it's getting down more toward D.C. Um, But the the, this could spread further along the uh, into the Midwest and the and the mid-Atlantic states of of uh, of the East Coast. So this is a real problem. It's a real issue. What does the what do the Democrats do right away? I said it yesterday, and I know that people said, oh, but they're already, I hadn't looked at their responses yet, but I knew, oh, climate change. It's climate change. Uh, think, think about that leap of, of deduction here. Think about the analysis. You'd have to say, well, it's 
all it's June. It's already so dry in this part of Canada because of a theoretical one degree Celsius rise in global temperature that UN climate panel experts estimate is going to occur probably, but not certainly, over something like the next 50 to 100 years. That has caused the dry to, not the poor forestry management. We had firefighters calling in yesterday. What were they saying? They don't, you know, the the environmentalist wackos in all these different places, they don't want any logging. They don't want any clearing of brush. They don't want, you know, if you're, if you're sending in men with hard hats and chainsaws, the lib environmentalists get upset. Oh my gosh, the tree has feelings. The tree has feelings. They don't like that. They don't want to hear that. Right? They don't want to hear the buzz, uh, the buzz of the chainsaws or the machinery necessary to clear the underbrush. So what do you, you have super dense, super packed forests now because of this. And this is where I bring up, it's, it is a fascinating but boring, I shouldn't say boring, that's, that's the wrong word, a fascinating but dense read, seeing like a state. Some of you will recall, I've talked about this before, and it's a book by James, uh, James Scott, where he talks about how efforts to improve, bringing experts together to improve humanity have in so many, at so many different periods created just catastrophe. And, and the biggest problem is when you have a top down, a theoretical belief based approach to something, you know, like climate change. And then that pushes all the decision making down, not the people at the ground level, not the people at the local level, not those who are dealing with the reality of it. Uh, and there's a whole section of the OK, there's a whole section of the book. I, you know, I've, I've read it. I, I'd, rec- I'd recommend it to anybody who wants to see. But the best one is when they talk about the German forestry um, German forestry efforts of, I think it's the mid or late 19th century, where you know German scientists, forestry, agricultural scientists say, you know what we're going to do? We're going to make super efficient tree growing our thing. And so they say, forget about just planting and, and encouraging the growth of trees and the ecosystem around them. We're, gonna li- we're only going to plant one type of tree. We're going to line up that tree one after another in you know, in perfect little plots spaced apart, and what they found out is, yeah, okay, that sounds theoretically, mathematically like a good idea, but then you don't have the biodiversity you need to deal with different uh, infestations and fungus and insects that come in, it wipe out all the trees, and you don't support the undergrowth necessary for the healthiest soil, and it's a total disaster. The smartest, the smartest scientist, though, thought in Germany at the time this was going to be a great idea. They were wrong. So the climate scientists, guess what? They're very wrong. We we have some of the freak out over this. I want to share this with you. Clip 23 is the libs losing their minds, not because we can't breathe the air. You know, that's a real thing to be upset about. They're losing their minds over the climate change. Play it. The fires are burning hotter. They're burning faster over the years. What kind of role does climate change play in all this? Well, it's just a hotter, drier place. Particularly because of climate change. This is why the president has made climate change uh, a priority. We have a lot of work to do to reverse the destruction of climate change. The vast majority of young Republicans are coming around to the reality of climate change. It is impossible to not put this in the category of some form of meaningful climate change is happening in this world. We're the first generation to really feel the effects of climate change and the last one to be able to do anything meaningful about it. Last one to do anything meaningful. If we don't do more for climate change in the next 10 years, we're all, it's all going to fall apart. Man, I wish there was a way. I got a great way to make money. We create an exchange where I can put up, a, I can put up cash and the bet would be, are the same voices, not even just the same political party, the same voices in 10 years going to be saying, we only have 10 more years before the climate crisis is too much. I would put, for me, a very substantial portion of, I'd put all the money I don't need to pay my monthly bills into that, into that account, I think. Because, of course, they're going to be saying this in 10 years. Every 10 years, it's, this is the last 10 years we have. Couldn't be any more straightforward what the propaganda 
effect is of all of this. But Bernie Sanders, Bernie's out there talking climate change. Uh, because remember, if you're somebody who believes that the state should have all of the real control of wealth, if you're, I mean, Bernie's really a commie. He says he's a socialist, but he's honeymooned in Moscow when it was the Soviet Union. He chose that for his honeymoon. What else do you have to know? But here's a guy who, if he thought it was politically saleable, would be a full on, full blown. If there was an American Communist Party that could still get some support. There is an American Communist Party, but it never really, no one pays attention to it because it's become the Democrat Party. Uh, Bernie Sanders would be a full-on open communist, but here he is talking about climate change. Play 24. So what you're looking at is major forest fires in Canada, which are a direct result of climate change and the dryness of the forests. I got bad news for you, and it's only going to get worse. And our job now is to do everything that we can to wake up this Congress, to wake up the American people, to demand that we fundamentally transform our energy system away from fossil fuel, cut carbon emissions significantly, not only here in the United States, in China, all over the world, or else we're not going to have much of a planet to leave to our kids and future generations. So let's stand together. And I hope my colleagues here in D.C., the Congress, are breathing the air. Carbon emissions, let's stand together. Well, if you notice any similarity between Fauci and Bernie in either, um, uh, you know, what do you call it, impersonation or just listening to them, it's because they come from, the, they're, both from uh, they're both from Brooklyn. So that's an old school, a little bit of an old school Brooklyn accent that they, they carry on. And uh, that's why, uh, anyway, put that aside for a second. Bernie's doing his, his best here to pretend like this is something that is going to result in anything. They're just propagandizing people. They're trying to tell them, we have to do, what are we going to do? Let's ask the real question. Okay, Bernie, what do you want to do? You want to just continue to pretend that we don't need fossil fuels for the advanced civilization that we currently enjoy? where we stand on the shoulders of geniuses in order to have lives of productivity and luxury that even a few generations ago would have been unthinkable, unthinkable anywhere in the world. It's the dumbest thing that Democrats are all made to at least pretend they believe in 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 so many ways. It is so absurd, but it, it also is bothersome because remember, you can't have, when a crisis hits, Yes, crisis is an opportunity, right? The, uh, the old cliche, but it's cliches exist for a reason. It's very true. They see this as an opportunity to push greater control over your life and an enlarged government to do more pointless and even destructive things. It should be an opportunity to say, what the heck is going on with these places run by leftists, whether it's California or Canada, and the massive forest fires that they can't control? How do we stop that? Because if the answer is you have to pay higher gas prices so the global temperature changes a little bit in 100 years, that is crazy. There's no other word you can really use to describe it accurately. That is nuts. Well, I guess that's a different word, but same idea. Same idea. Uh, I really lose it with them on this one.